Hello everyone and welcome back to Prestige Reef. Today's video is a slightly unusual topic, considering it's coming from someone who's been in the hobby for 11 years, but bear with me and stick with it to the end, because surprisingly, this might actually push you in the direction of wanting to start a marine tank. So today's question is, do you really want a saltwater tank? Before we get to that however, I just want to thank all the people that helped me boost my subscriber count. A couple of weeks ago, I explained that YouTube works via momentum, and as you can see, I got a massive boost when so many people clicked that subscribe button. As I mentioned previously, clicking that button really does make a huge difference with regards to how much YouTube shares my videos. I try to educate people on how to be successful in the hobby, and the more YouTube shares my videos, the more people, and more importantly fish which we are potentially helping. So let's see if we can give it another boost by clicking that subscribe button. And if you're already a subscriber, why not give me a cheeky like? I'm a simple creature, and that is essentially a metaphorical pat on the head for me. Anyway, back to today's video. I thought long and hard about this topic before deciding to go ahead and make the video, because I certainly don't want to push anyone away from the hobby. Having said that, people should be entering it with their eyes open, because if they aren't prepared, they will soon get fed up and leave anyway. Sadly, the average lifespan of a new hobbyist is just 1 to 1.5 years. This has been slowly creeping up over the last 10 years, however it's still not long when you consider the expense of setting up a new tank. So in this video, I'm going to show you all the negatives of owning a reef tank, and some of the ways you can resolve them. So let's start with the most obvious one, expense. Expense is one of those things which is relative depending on the person's wealth, but also the reef tank they're trying to set up. It can also be affected by the amount of time which someone is willing to invest in reducing the costs. There's no way to get around it. This hobby does come with an expense, and it certainly can add up. Depending on what method you run your tank, it will require a life support system, lighting, substrate, rock work, livestock, electricity, salt, food, water, additives, medications, coral dips, both mechanical and chemical forms of filtration, and the list goes on and on. There are various ways to reduce the cost of running a saltwater tank, however I won't go into that in this video, as I recently created a video on that topic and I'll leave a link in the description box below, if you'd like to see it. So to briefly sum up, if you're looking for a hobby which will turn you into a pauper, this might be the one for you. Next up is marital conflicts. The first thing you'll notice is I didn't say conflict with your wife. This hobby is suitable for both men and women, and we need to end this mentality of it being a boys club. As I said, it can be appreciated by both genders, and there are certainly some women out there which are giving us boys a run for our money, with some very nice reef tanks. There are many reasons for these conflicts, weird smells, filter socks in the washing machine, and floods just to name a few, but there are usually two major ones which come up time and time again. These are the amount of time and money the hobbyist spends on the tank. The best way to resolve this is to ensure that your partner is getting the attention they deserve, while also trying to slowly introduce your partner to the hobby. Not entirely unlike acclimating a new fish, this takes time and should be done slowly, rather than trying to force them to enjoy something that they currently have no interest in. I've always found getting them to choose and name fish is a good start. This doesn't always work though, and alternatively, I found encouraging your significant other to find a hobby which gives them an equal level of enjoyment can work wonders. If neither of those work however, just don't be surprised if your partner suddenly shows interest in a bit of Fifty Shades of Grey action. It's just their way of venting their frustration. So if you're looking for a hobby which involves a little bit of socially accepted domestic violence, this might be the hobby for you. Stress. Anyone that's ever started a marine tank to reduce stress was sadly disappointed. I agree that having a fish tank can reduce stress levels, just as long as you aren't the one having to maintain it. There's a whole list of things which can go wrong. Power cuts, disease, pests, and leaks are just a few good examples, which is why building a tank from the beginning with redundancy measures in place is always a good idea. The anxiety caused by knowing that any moment something you've spent years creating can be ruined in a matter of minutes can be very high. The more your knowledge grows, the lower this anxiety level gets, but that doesn't mean it doesn't go away, and I still occasionally get up at 2am to check everything is still running. Every so often the anxiety flares up again, when you notice that something is wrong but no idea why, even though all your test results are coming out where they're expected to be. Corals don't just commit suicide, and sometimes when one randomly dies it gives you a sense of impending doom for weeks. 
So if you're looking for a hobby which will induce baldness by pulling out your own hair, this might be the hobby for you. Vacations. This hobby can make taking a vacation difficult, depending on how your tank is set up. The harsh reality is, no one will love our tanks like we do. Many of us will spend hours and hours observing our livestock, and know each fish and coral as individuals. This means when we see a couple of tiny white dots on our beloved powder blue tang, or one of our acros hasn't got his polyps out, we instinctively can tell something is wrong. Every tank is different, and it doesn't matter how experienced your tank sitter is, they won't know it like we do. And that's if you're lucky enough to find a tank sitter that knows what they're doing. Half the time our tanks are left with people that have virtually no knowledge of aquatics, and I've heard many horror stories of people coming home to see the tank sitter hasn't even noticed there's a decomposing fish laying on the sand. There are various forms of redundancy and monitoring which are able to utilise these days, which can manage the risks, but the reality is, every day you're away from the tank is another step closer to something going very wrong. So if you're looking for a hobby which will make you want to come home early from every vacation you go on, then this might be the one for you. Labour. This hobby can be very labour intensive and time consuming. Again, depending on how your tank is set up. Most tanks need attention every day. The fish need to be fed, the glass needs to be cleaned, water needs to be changed, auto top up and dosing containers refilled, skimmer emptied, power heads cleaned, and to accurately know exactly what's going on with your water chemistry, religious water testing, and it all needs to be done by you, while juggling various other aspects of your life. For me, the worst part is lugging around multiple 25 litre water casters. So if you're looking for a hobby which will give you backaches similar to a 90 year old man, this might be the one for you. That last bit leads nicely onto the next topic. Prepare to live in a house with no storage. Acris are like squirrels, and we like to keep everything fish related in preparation for harsher times. I have a whole room full of random stuff I've not used in years, with the idea that one day I might have an emergency situation on my hands. Not if, but when that emergency situation does occur, I'll have everything I could possibly need to resolve it in my Aladdin's cave or what is essentially junk which should be thrown away. Having said that, I did need to replace the pipe fitting on my phosphate reactor the other day, so I'm very glad I kept my old cracked phosphate reactor from about 5 years ago, just in case one day I needed to salvage from it. So if you're looking for a hobby which will turn you into a hoarder, this might be the one for you. Like many of my videos, this video is meant to be lighthearted, and although these are some of the negatives to being in the hobby, what you really need to think about is that despite all of these, there are still millions of people all over the world that are so passionate about the hobby that none of these things matter. To me, that proves more than anything just how special keeping a saltwater tank can be. When you look at it from that perspective, we must be crazy to be willing to put up with all of these things and still be happy at the end of the day. So in answer to my original question, do you really want a saltwater tank? Absolutely yes. This hobby has filled me with an unbelievable passion, and I'm very happy I took that initial step and decided to get into it. Maybe now it's your turn to take that first step. I hope you enjoyed watching my video. Please feel free to comment below if you have any questions. If you did enjoy it, why not click that like button and subscribe to the channel. Have a good week and I'll see you next time. As always, I just want to say a massive thank you to the people that support me on Patreon. Never underestimate the value of what you do with regards to keeping this channel going. You've all been brilliant. Thank you.